Nope. Once again, welcome everybody. We're so glad to have you here. Um, if you are, if you'd like us to see your shining face, feel please feel free. Also, um, the there's about 40 of us in here, so I think the easiest thing is going to be if you can uh, raise your electronic hand um, instead of just unmuting. Um, so that we can just call on people as we go along. And, and maybe we can, Lexi, what do you think about starting off by asking people to raise their hand if they've already got a seed library? And then we'll see how many, and then we'll ask how many people are brand new to it so we can just see what our mix is. Yeah, I think that's great. So should we do first, if you currently have a seed library, if you could raise your hand. hand. Where is that? It's hidden under reactions at the bottom of your screen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting there. We know where you're headed, Grace. <laughs> I'm on the package. No, that's not it. Okay, well, my hand's up. Oh, there it is. I think. Hi there, I'm from Seashell, BC, Canada. All right, so it looks like we have six people who raised their hand. And how many are in all together? Okay, so if you could lower your hand. Thank you for that. Let me write that down. And then if you, let's see, Luella, how should we say it? Like if you are interested in starting a seed library? Actually, let's have three categories. One, you have um, you have a seed library, which we just did. Mm -hmm. Second is you've used a seed library. Mm -hmm. And then the third will be um, you, you're interested in, you're brand new. Yeah, okay, great. So if you have, you, if you have used a seed library ever, if you could raise your hand. Well, this is looking like we've got a very nice mix of experienced usage. Um, those of us who have used a, side, uh, a seed library can put our hands down. And then well, if you are brand new to running a seed library. Yes. All right. Fantastic. And I see somebody in the chat has said, um, not a seed library, but seed swaps. I'll try and um, read things from the chat just in case there's some people who've joined by phone and can't see the chat. Okay. And someone had posted to me that they are launching six seed libraries in the next two months. Whoa. Yeah. So Lexi, you want to start off by maybe giving them some, maybe either asking them or giving them some tips of things to think about or unusual hurdles, or do people maybe already have questions? Maybe everyone who has uh, raised their hand for uh, being brand new, lower your hand so we can see if there are new questions, please. And then I think we can open, yeah, once all the hands are lowered, then we can open it up to hand raising to see about who has questions and how we can get started discussing. Okay, Grace. Hi there. Hi. Uh, my question is, I'm working in a school and been gardening for four years with a 1500 square foot greenhouse and outdoor beds. And I've been saving seeds for the students. And now I'm starting a seed library. 
in the school library. Mm -hmm. And it seems like because it's begun in September, uh, the practice with teachers, it's, it's sort of hard to get teachers on board or to, so, okay, I'm gonna leave it there. So what is the age range of the students at your school? Uh, K to grade seven. Okay. And where are you in? Uh, I am in, we are in Seashell, which is on the Sunshine Coast, a ferry away from Vancouver mainland. Okay. Okay. So I am the, I run the Seed Library at a toddler through eighth grade school and definitely having teacher buy-in is important. I feel like that's something that you build, that you build a relationship with teachers over time. For me, especially for the younger students, so it's toddler through eighth grade, like the three to six-year-olds, I would go into the classrooms and do lessons with seeds and basic seed starting, seed germinating, putting um, seeds in wet paper towels and putting it in a Ziploc bag and taping it up to the window so the students could actually watch the seeds germinate. So it's things like going into the classrooms. If it's an option, if it's, if it is an option for you going into the classrooms to do lessons, to get the students to get interested and excited about seeds, since, you know, at least in Denver, the growing season, most of the growing season happens during the summer, summer vacation. Where are you thinking? So you're, you were thinking of locating your seed library in the school library? Yes. And I have a buy-in from the school librarian. Although, she, yes, it is huge. And she's very interested. But she's only there three days a week. So, I mean, it, that's good. Yeah. Um, and also the equipment I loaned, I donated, but I'm taking it back, is a car, an old card catalog because the library is too small and they want to locate it where it's too hot okay. um, to, to uh, increase knowledge about how to keep seeds in a school library is interesting because teachers want to keep them in the greenhouse where it's really hot. So yeah. it's a bit of a procedure, but I, I guess my biggest question is to understand how to uh, incorporate a seed library club or a growing club, you know, mm -hmm. maybe one day, one lunch time a week, I can do that. And I'm wondering if anybody has experience with that, probably you, question mark. I like the idea of doing a club. So here we have, um, I'm just trying to think, we have soil beds where we grow out plants to save for seed. And what I found over time is that the seed saving generally is more, is received better among the younger ages than it right. is among the middle schoolers. Um, I, was, I just want to go back to the location of your seed library. That's a tough one because people tend to want to put it where, you know, if it's, it, they'll have a free space and want to put the seed library there. And I definitely hear you about putting in a space that's too warm or we um, originally wanted folks wanted to put our seed library right where it was super sunny. And so that was a huge amount of, of education up front about why you want to have the seed library in the library, where it would be most successful. Uh, and then also figuring out about checking out and how much the librarian would get involved. Right. But I think initially, I think also the buy-in from the teachers is a important step. I think the relationship with the school librarian and then going into the classrooms or like doing a, a seed club, I think during lunch is a great start. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess also to um, to tell them about the importance of saving seeds is also. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely a lot of education to get people interested and committed. Thank you. May I add something? Yes. Just in my own background, working as a garden club and a master gardener, and actually also for a um, greenhouse, when kids do something that's really fun or with seeds, and they take some information or something home to their parents, all right. of a sudden, then you get parental buy-in or parental involvement. Once you get the parental involvement, 
then I think that helps ease the way into the teacher involvement too. But I've found that getting that parental involvement is really, really cool. Thank you. All right, Susan, would you like to contribute anything else or can I? No, no, I'm sorry, I'm done. Okay. Oh yeah, all right. So is it Moral? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Hello, it is Moral, yes, that, that was correct, thank you. Um, I was going to type my question, but I think it's a little difficult to explain it there. So uh, I will try to, to articulate myself better here. Uh, so I live in Ames, Iowa. And I just finished my master gardeners and as one as my project, I want to start a seed light library and I've been interested in seed saving for uh, quite some time. Um, well, more like theoretically. Uh, so, uh, and I get actually uh, quite a bit of support from um, the uh, person who organized our master gardeners uh, project here, the master gardener class. Um, but uh, what I want to do actually is ultimately do it through uh, outside of the library, within the library rather. Um, but I think right now we don't have the uh, much of an enthusiasm from the library. Um, and we are thinking about starting it at the extension office uh, and then maybe uh, moving it to the library when, if and when it gets bigger. So I just wanted to ask your opinion about um, the pros and cons of having a seed library um, kind of more related to an extension office versus have it be in the public library. I'm sorry, it was a little long, but do you have any wisdom for me about that? Luella, do you want Thank to you. address this first? I'm eager to hear what you have to say. So what what I would first think, so I'm a master gardener in Colorado and I'm putting some of my own experiences, combining it with your um, situation. So I wonder in terms of accessibility, if the public library, the number of people who are going through the public library who will have access to those seeds versus if you're doing it through an extension agency, just making sure, trying to figure out how you can get a comparable number of people who are going through who will have access to the seeds. If you have you know, the physical location with a seed library, you have a potentially safe place to store them with consistent temperature and humidity. Mm -hmm. um, when you first started talking, I was thinking, oh, I wonder about farmer's markets or markets mm -hmm. where you could have a table to start up mm -hmm. sharing information about the importance of seed saving and seed sharing, but then that's on you having to bring everything, like figuring out which markets you could go to, having to bring the materials with you. Uh, yes, I think going to the farmer's market was one of the options. And another idea is actually there's going to be a repair cafe that has been going on for a while, like every few months. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some people in the repair cafe actually are interested in doing a seed swap at the repair cafe in April. Uh, so I, I didn't talk to them yet, but there's that kind of an idea. And uh, there is one uh, farm here that also does like CSA and work shared related stuff. So they're also, they already do exchanges. Uh, and we are in touch with them too. So maybe we are thinking about going to their exchanges. So um, I think my main idea is I'm a little worried if I chew bigger than I can, you know, swallow at this point. Uh, and I want to see if I can, like how long would it take for me to organize this whole thing? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about giving myself maybe a year and slowly building it up. Mm -hmm. And maybe like doing little exchanges and like getting the word out about the, the library this year, this coming season, um, growing season, and then like having a more proper library, uh, if I can convince them at the actual library, because that's, as you were saying, yes, more people do go to the library and extension office is kind of like out of the way. Um, and, um, but at the same time, like the growing season is coming. <laughs> So, yeah, so there's that, that pressure that you feel. Yeah. <laughs> I think so that, I'm, oh, sorry. Yes, sorry, I, yeah, basically all, all that I was going to say is I was wondering what do you think about timing? Like, should I 
just like go ahead, jump at the deep end and try to do it this year or like slow, go a little slower? I would suggest going slow because I, just from having watched people go through this, when you jump in and take on all this work, it can get a ton. It's a lot of work all at once. Mm -hmm. Repair shop sounds like a great place to do your next step, to reach out, start building your community, find mm -hmm. other seed savers so that you can have people help you help add seeds to your seed library. And maybe they have connections for a location that might be a great place for a seed library. Mm -hmm. And as for getting the public library involved, that that I, I would be very curious about, but that I don't have experience with since I'm located in a school, but that'd be really interesting. The relationships that you could build that could potentially get you into the public library or get them interested in inviting you into the public library. Okay, thank you. I so I, I, I wanna be just one voice on the jumping in side. And if you decided you wanted to be more of a leaper, I have found that tomatoes narrow it by what type of seed. Hmm. And a tomato seed swap is excellent because tomato seeds are very easy to save and people are very passionate about <laughs> um, tomatoes. And then um, I was part of a group that did get a, a public library to have a seed um, a seed checkout. Um, and so I would just, any event that you do, ask people if they are, if they have a connection at a library. Um, because the, if, if they already have the passion, then your path is much, much easier. Okay. That's actually great advice too. Thank you so much for both, to both of you. Luella, would you mind taking over with the, um, with discussing, I, there are a few questions in the chat that I can answer by posting, uh, websites. Perfect. And I, I did want to make sure you see the one that says looking for resources to offer seed saving workshops for the public. Um, so Susan, did you yes. have a question or did you have some more wisdom to give us? No, no, no. I have plenty of questions. Um, we are starting a seed library in my tiny little town in Lubeck, Maine. We're an underserved food area. We are underserved financially. There's a lot of poverty in this area. So we're really feeling that a seed library will be very helpful for a lot of homeowners and people trying to grow their own food. My question is, we also know that quite often a full packet of seeds is too much for people. So what's the nuts and bolts of putting things into little envelopes, making sure we have some way to print the information on how to grow these seeds. Um, what we plan on doing right now is I'm gonna do a seed starting seminar at the local outreach center on one weekend. Then the next weekend, we're gonna launch an open seed library. Then on the weekend after that, I'm gonna do one more seed starting program to try and get this really implanted in everyone's minds. <laughs> Let them do it over the summer and then announce a seed saving class. And I will have to get one of the master gardeners in for that. I haven't saved seeds in years and get them to do a class on how to save seeds, what seeds can be saved for people to bring back. My other question is, how do I write a good letter to beg for seeds from seed companies? I'm not sure how to get all these seeds and we can get some donations from people, but I do wanna try and get some seeds from other companies so that we've got a nice little supply for people of the basics, peppers, tomatoes, onions, et cetera. So I know that's a lot of questions in one. It's really the nuts and bolts. I have no idea what I'm doing, so. <laughs> Well, let me start with the last question first because I have okay. you've overflown my buffer. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so that's okay. Um uh, I I like to start close by and then branch out. So okay. in the begging for and and um people lots of seed companies have uh, as part of their charter giving away seeds. Okay. And so if you just look for local seed people around you, okay. um and just start reaching out to them. And, um, you know, seed people like to share. Um, mm -hmm. the, I will jump into Lexi's boat on the, um, make sure you have enough people to help you with what you're trying to embark on, mm -hmm. because it sounds like you're, you've got these huge, huge, huge plans. And maybe if you can figure out 
Um, again, I'm, I'm going to go back to like, maybe you don't start with all of the seeds. If you have people who haven't started seeds before, mm -hmm. instead of having a, a, a variety of seeds that they, mm -hmm. that you give them, maybe, maybe this year is cherry tomatoes. I'm, I'm a big advocate of tomatoes as a, um, seed gateway drug, um, okay. because sense. cherry tomatoes are abundant mm -hmm. they are, I like to call them, um, uh, their snacker things so that you don't have to wash them. I, I live in Detroit. I'm also um, surrounded by people who are food insecure mm -hmm. and a lot of the families and I, I, I'm, I'm rooted with the kids and a lot mm -hmm. of the families are too busy making a living to be able to um, devote time to a garden. And That's so an issue, I think in this area also, and we do have a small children's garden. We just started last year, which has been huge, hugely successful. And that's how the seed library came about. Yeah. So something that the, the kids can serve themselves has been super effective here. Okay. Um, and so, and, and cherry tomatoes have a much longer season than like sugar snap peas are also mm -hmm. excellent, but it's a shorter season and probably mm -hmm. don't even have the word out. So well, up here um, in Maine, it could be most of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty chilly up here. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll need to come visit you because I am not a fan of our summers. Um, summers are beautiful here. It rarely gets above 80. Nice. So did you, did you want to um, remind us of your other questions in there? Uh, yeah. The other question is, how do I separate packets? How do I do a half packet? How do people check out? I guess it's really the logistics. When Can you tell me like a walkthrough of somebody comes in and asks for... I'd like 10 tomato seeds. How would your seed library do that? I guess that's what I want to know. Is it okay if I answer this? Okay, so at our school, we the first five years, we had students take seed packets that were donated by companies. Another place to get seed donations is to go to your local hardware store at the end of the growing season and mm -hmm. ask if they can donate seed packets. All seed, commercial seed packets have... Um, sell oh by goodness. date on them. Yes. And that's a, that's a good way to, to take in a lot of seeds because a lot of the hardware stores just want to get rid of their seed packets. So that's something worth looking into, you know, from August yeah. through uh, August, September, October. In terms of packaging seeds, what we did in, originally is we had little coin envelopes right. and we would handwrite what was uh, what were we were putting in the in the envelopes, and then usually doing a pinch of seeds. So I would always remind my students: one seed equals one plant, mm -hmm. and it was tedious. It took so much time to do all the packaging. It was really, uh, it was a very clean look in the library because you're just taking out packets of already labeled and um, labeled and sealed envelopes. But what we have transitioned to are glass jars glass jars with those envelopes mm -hmm. nearby, but people self-serve. For the serving spoons, we the largest size is a quarter teaspoon and then smaller, just so people aren't taking really large amounts of right. whatever seed it is. And then having pre-printed labels where um, people can just quickly write in what the seed is that they are putting in the envelope mm -hmm. so that the packaging really falls then on the people who are visiting the seed line. Yeah. Okay. We also had, oh, sorry, I think also for the glass jars, as long as it's not in direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a, in our library, we had a mouse problem this past summer. Mm -hmm. And we lost, when our seeds were in, in the paper envelopes, we lost mm -hmm. a few, all of our seeds. Okay the mice. So glass jars are generally a safer bet. We have one seed catalog or card catalog that the librarian has donated, and that's going to be near the checkout desk. So, and it's in a nice cool area, um, mm -hmm. high visibility for everybody who comes in. So I think that's going to be an, a win-win for everybody. And the yeah. librarians, all three of them are gardeners. One actually runs a truck farm. So we've got lots of, lots of wonderful people involved in it. Um, I was just, it was mostly logistics, like when you try and tell people how to grow something, the germination information, the days to maturity, all of that stuff really needs to be done, typed up and, and Xeroxed out is what I'm guessing. Yeah. So, that, yeah. so that's you're what you're talking about a lot of work. 
Yeah, because you're you're trying to lighten, you're already taking on a lot of work doing this, which is great, but you also mm -hmm. want to make sure that it's not too much. And to have librarians who are gardeners, who are enthusiastic, who can share their enthusiasm is fantastic. And then I think, offer, and then the classes so that people, when they get seeds, they're excited, they go home and then educate, helping them learn about the next steps towards successful gardening for setting them up for success. That's good. And I, I found that with the kids and that's what I wanted to do for the, the adults. That's why I wanted this information because I'm good at getting the kids to be successful. I'm not so sure about how to make the adults successful. So I like your idea of the snacks, the easy things, cherry tomatoes can go into a pot, things that can be planted in pots, keeping the amount of seeds more minimal for the first year and then branching out as we have more time. And then as far as asking for seeds, that's that's an okay thing. That's how people do it, right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it all. And I, I wanted to say for everybody, Lexi put um, some great resources in the chat. So so scroll up. There's there's an excellent one on starting a, a seed library. So oh, good. Okay. Um, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Lexi, you want to uh, pull the next question? Yes. So, it, and unfortunately, it just says iPhone. Someone has their hand raised, but I don't know your name. Why, Huskaha is Miss Chiplak in Yapi Chinlois. I'll just say hi, good day. My name is uh, Chiplak. Uh, in English, it's Lois. Yeah. So, um, I am from the Okanagan in BC. I have started five seed libraries in our public libraries um, within the past year. Um, but I, what, where I'm going at is, uh, and I've, I've got lots of experience working in food security. I started the first community garden in the Okanagan way back in the 90s and been doing food work for years and started incredible edibles. So that transforming how do you, how do we change the world by transforming public spaces, planting food for who's ever hungry? So I've got that kind of stuff all nailed down. Um, I'm just a little, feeling a little uncomfortable leading a workshop on seed saving. So I'm looking for PowerPoints or videos around that for a public setting. Okay. Not... Thank you. That was, that's really exciting. I, so, I would recommend there's a link that I provided for Richmond Grows. Let's see, yeah. richmondgrowsseeds.org. Yeah. So yeah, I was aware um, of that one. Yeah, Rebecca um, runs that and it's a fantastic resource. I've, I have pulled information from there. And in terms of... I guess what I'm looking for is like ready-made PowerPoint or, or videos and stuff to plop, pop into the presentation, so. Yeah. Yeah. That, so when I, what I, years ago, I took a week of seed school teacher training with the Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance, which has since become um, a new organization. I think looking for researching seed school teacher training and seeing what's available in your area or online. And for me, the, um, my first step with seed saving was going for um, the ones where there was less likely to have cross pollination. I feel like there are resources online, but I can't think of anything off of the top of my head. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if you do think of something, my email is incredibleedibleokanagan at gmail.com. All right. Thank you. So that's O-K-A-N-A-G-A-N. -A -A it's beautiful valley in the, in British Columbia, Canada. And it's a Gmail? gmail.com. Yep. Thank you. Frank, how about, it looks like you have your hand raised. Uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, having a little bit of conflict here when like you were talking about the cherry tomatoes being a good way to start something. Um, the problem with that is if I grab three varieties of cherry tomatoes, it's hard for me to save seed and then bring them back. Uh, and I do want to uh, 
have people develop varieties that grow well in this area, which is a very heavy clay area. So it seems like either I get seeds from an outside source and bring them in and give them away, or if I'm trying to encourage people to grow their own varieties, then giving out uh, something like cherry tomatoes where they, they can't save the seed because they don't know what variety they'll get if they cross pollinate. Uh, so I see a conflict there. So you have a way to kind of work that out so maybe both things can be done. Or... Um, so Frank, one thing to think about is to ask the people who are using your library whether they care if it is a named cultivar. Um, one thing that, um, one thing you can consider is going the land race approach where you welcome the cross pollination and you keep getting seeds that are more and more um, adapted to your local conditions. Um, that, that takes away the need to kind of segregate everything. And that's, that's the, the more wild approach that I lean towards. So that's, that's going to be, I'm not going to be of any use on how do you keep things from changing. I'm all about how do you embrace the change so that the future is simpler. So um, I don't know if that's helpful to you. Yeah. So in that case, would I just label it mixed variety, cherry tomato? You know, you could even, um, so you could just, you could on purpose mix it with a whole bunch of different seeds and then let people see what happens. And you can also, um, if, if you have the community to do this, have people start doing their own breeding, right? Of um, what it is that they like, and then give them, you know, give them their own names and you have your, your, your own community's favorite tomatoes, something to think about. Great. But, but whatever you do, it's really important to be clear, right? So mm -hmm. don't pretend like it's a Brad's Atomic Grape if it's the community's favorite cherry. That's great. Good idea. Thank you. So I don't see any more questions. I'm wondering if anybody has a favorite tip or something that that they've learned or uh, they they've come through difficulty. Lexi, sorry, I wanted to, one thing that was brought up, and this came up in a previous presentation, was the legality issues of having a seed library. And in the uh, session that I was in earlier, it was recommended that you contact your the state that you live in contact the, I guess, like the USDA office um, of your local branch for your state to find out what the issues are. I'm in Colorado, and here it was, as long as you are giving things out for free, running a seed library is okay. It became different once if you are selling seeds. So I think when you're researching what the... Um, legislation or restrictions are, if there are any for seed libraries in your state, always reminding whoever you're talking to that it is, it, that you are giving seeds out for free, that you're not selling. Diane, did you have something you wanted to share with us? Yes, um, so I'm part of the, Master Gardeners um, in Washington State, and we're starting a seed library at the Extension Office. And one of the questions I think we had was, uh, we felt that we needed to have some sort of disclaimer about uh, germination percentage, that it's basically unknown, especially if, like in our case, we are getting a lot of uh, seeds from companies that are technically expired, but we're kind of checking them against viability charts to see, yeah, it's likely that they're still good. 
um, but we're not able to take the time to do germination testing. So just what kind of general disclaimer or how do you go about kind of, you know, letting the people that are taking the seed know that this isn't a hundred percent guarantee. I think the same disclaimer, like along the lines of when you have a seed library, then people are bringing in seeds that you cannot guarantee that the seeds that they brought in are going to be true to type. And so that can also be um, just part of the general disclaimer about that you have not done the germination. You do not know the germination rates for these seeds. One of the things about a seed library when people start bringing seeds in is there's a fair amount of, there's some information that you will get from people who are bringing seeds into your seed library, but then there's also a fair amount that you won't know. And just making that clear for people who are going to be checking out of the seed library. We're not sure of the germination rate. Um, you know, we're not sure of the cross-pollination, which I think is good to start with a smaller number of seeds, especially ones that, where there's tends to be less cross-pollination so that the things are more likely to grow true to type. Right. And then, thank you. And then what about, you know, do you try to label every packet? Do you put a sign on the cart? What do you, how do you kind of convey that information? Ah, uh, so signs, signs that are all around the area when they're checking seeds out or when they're serving seeds that they can see the signs clearly marked, like that the seed that is available, just the disclaimers about not being able to guarantee it. But if you think about a seed company, if I'm gonna buy tomatoes from a certain seed company, I not often actually do I, only sometimes do I get germination rate information. And I think that the, I think the, the clients who are visiting seed libraries, I, I would be surprised to hear people complain about a germination rate. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Lexi, we had somebody from the chat. Carmela wanted to um, share a couple of thoughts. Carmela, could you take yourself off mute and let us know what you have on your mind? If you're on a phone, I think a Mac is a star nine. No, you wouldn't be able to do... Uh, the, the mute button is in the lower left-hand corner. So my name is Sophia, and I'm wondering if maybe it's my name that is the weird name or whatever, but I'm definitely not Carmela. Perfect. Well, you're showing up as Carmela, but so go right ahead, Sophia. Sorry to call you the wrong name. Oh, it's okay. You know, I think it's because I share space with this Zoom um, account with other people. So that makes sense. My name is Sophia Bugs. I am the a farmer in Youngstown, Ohio, Ladybug's Farm, as in P-H-A-R-M, as a medicine farmer. And I guess what I just wanted to um, have something to share with all the questions is, one, I'm not new to seed libraries, but I just recently, about a year ago, kind of officially got a library started with the local community space that serves a bigger area um, where there's food insecurity. So I wanted to share that I think it's important in general when we're talking about land access, we're talking about seeds or variety, that we not get too caught up in all the academic specifics. The purpose of the seed was to connect you to them. That was the purpose for us all to connect. So you do not have to be the expert. It is a way for you to link the community. It is a way for you to shake a hand and make a friend. It is a way for us to teach others our traditions as it relates to the seed. You're the expert. And as your customer client base uh, community grows, you're going to have those scientists that show up in the room that say, I want to know the germination rate. I want to know the variety. It's important to do this to that to me. Stay out of the way of what's important for the community that you're serving and let the community tell you what it is that they need. But at this point, people are so hungry that the questions that we're asking might not be the most important thing. The signs I love, where there are signage, 
people can just ask questions. But if you just put on there from your mind, the seed that you know, when you hand that pack to the person who's not fully understanding, that gives you an amazing opportunity to meet that person and share a recipe and share an idea and share a smile and the possibility of them too becoming the seed. So I think that's important that whatever communities we're serving, and oftentimes we don't look like the communities that we are serving. So we have to wait as long as it takes for the community to be awakened enough to say, this is what, uh, this is the thing about the seed that I want to know. And I promise you that'll be the greatest weight of your life. But just right there alone, label it as you know it, have them already ready and available. Never underestimate how many people who actually want seeds. Don't get caught up into what they're going to do with the seeds. But you bring yourself, your wholeness to the seed exchange because really it's about connecting to people. I just wanted to share that, that message. I'm not a seed expert. But if I was someone in a community who's not an expert, who is asking questions, really I'm there for you, circle space and building and growing the land and the community. So thank you so much, everybody. And happy seed sharing. <laughs> thank you, Sophia. Um, I, I'd like to recruit you for next year. <laughs> and uh, and I, I want to hand it over. Lexi, I, I can see that it's um, five minutes till the top of the hour. So I wanted to give the time check and see and, and, and hand it to you. Yeah. Sophia, thank you so much. That was really, really good and really important to hear. And I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing that with us. Uh, I'm trying, I'm looking through the chat. Oh, what if you have a plant sale to fund the library? I think that is fine. I think it's the fact that the seed exchange that's happening once you have a seed library, that there's not money involved. I think that takes it, um, that is important. That having it, running a seed sa a seedling sale to make money, to save up enough money to start a seed library is fine. And yeah, Seed Savers Exchange is a really good resource. And all right, I'm going to need to log off so that I can give a quick announcement to the other groups that we just have four minutes left. Okay, um, Susan, I saw that your hand was up before. Did you have? Um, it was a quick question. Um, how do they actually check out? Do they need to? How do you have people do that? Do we need to know who gets the seeds or does it matter? How? I've seen it run different ways at different places. So um, my advice would be to encourage everyone to have it be as low a bar as possible. Um, and some, if you're getting grant monies, sometimes you need to, you almost always have to report uh, how many people and some demographic information. Right. Um, so if you can figure out a way to collect that, you know, figure out what the, your lowest bar of information you need to collect is, mm -hmm. and then make it be that. And, right. you know, and it'll be self-reported. And after that phrase and, and that um, wonderful little in, bit of information about connecting with our community, I'm thinking, oh, who cares how they check out? <laughs> you know, they're getting seeds and they're doing something amazing with them. So that's the important part. It Thank might you. be, you know, it might be interesting to shift it instead of saying check out, um, try and get them to check in and, and bring mm -hmm. photos of what they grew um, to oh, that's a great idea continue too. to extend that connection. Um, mm -hmm. So something to think about. We were planning on having a little thing over the summer called Evenings in the Garden where people can come in and ask questions of um, either Master Gardener or some of us in the Garden Club and help get some information on their gardens and just do informal things where we serve snacks to the community so that they feel like they're a part of things. Yeah. I, I think that's a great, great idea. I, I really needed this information. Lexi, you wanna bring it home? Yes, it was my first time broadcasting a message, so I'm hoping it actually went out correctly. <laughs> it did go out. Okay. I'm much better in the garden than I am on Zoom, I'll tell you that. <laughs>
So I'm, I did want to thank everyone for coming and attending. I feel like there's probably so many questions that we did not get to answer today, and I'm sorry about that. We, um, Eventbrite will send out information on how you can watch the sessions that happened earlier today. Um, all, they were recorded, so th that's an option to go back and if you weren't able to see some of the earlier sessions to go back and watch them. Um, the Richmond Grows is a great resource, and I think we, it is obvious here that we have the interest and the passion and the enthusiasm, and it's really heartening to see all of you and hear people's points of view and stories to know that like we are on a really great track, that we have so many people who are excited about seeds, who are excited about growing, who are excited about sharing, who have these fantastic stories about what it is they're growing, and then getting it into a format of a seed library. So a seed, you know, and I hope that you all, I, I hope that we have provided you some of the resources and that you can reach out if you have further questions. Thank you. So I, it is now time that I'm going to um, close down the, the session, but I did want to thank everyone for coming. It really, this was a great, a great hour, a very well-spent hour for me. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. You're fantastic. Keep growing. <laughs> Keep growing and sharing. Take care.